Hi, this is Iris and I am recording from Tokyo this time. I love just how I do tutorials in different parts of the world and different countries. So I'm going to try to keep, keep that up. However, that also means you need to suffer through really bad audio as I'm using the audio on my laptop which isn't perfect but I'll try to edit out as much noise as possible. Now and then you're going to hear a train <laughs> driving by and I'll be quiet and I'll probably have to cut the video to cut out the sound from the train. We've rented a house in Noborito and it's next to the train so keep the train goes every half an hour or something so hopefully I've timed it correctly. I know I promised this tutorial uh, last week, late last week, but we've been so busy and I've been so tired when I've gotten back home. We've been I'm walking for like nine hours a day and I still try to keep up with my daily exercise, running in the morning and yoga and so on. So I've just been too tired to record. But here is the tutorial. But first let me tell you what we did today because it was bloody awesome. We went to the Technology Museum in Tokyo and we saw so many robots. I'm going to post some of the videos up on YouTube. I'm sure you're going to like them. But let's not spend more time talking about that and let's talk about today's tutorial. Now, when we went to the Shibuya crossing, it's a massive crossing and you can have thousands of people crossing at the same time during the most busy hour. So we decided to go there and take some photos. I decided to try something I've never tried before and that is to create a time lapse. A time lapse is when you take photos with set interval of a long period of time and then you put them together and you're supposed to get this awesome video. I love photography and I haven't done that before so I decided to do that with my phone which is the is it really a phone phone? The massive Nokia 1520 which I really love. So I tried it for the first time, the result wasn't perfect and of course I wanted to create a time lapse. I did one in Premiere first, which is a video editing program, a quite uh, really advanced one, really good. And then I decided to, you know what, I want to do this in C Sharp. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Don't judge me on the end result because the photos weren't they should have been taken at night, it would have been better. We didn't do it during rush hour because we did it on a weekend when people aren't working. Well actually I think they're working on Saturdays but we were there on Sunday anyway. So I'm going to show you how to do that, I'll walk you through it step by step. As always with demo applications we're going to keep it very basic so make sure that when you create, if you were to use this in a production application of course you want to make sure that you have guard closes, you probably want to have quite a bit of test. The application I'm working on uh, is test driven so I've got plenty of tests and you have to mock away some of the things and I'm, I might do a separate tutorial on that but I want to get you started so I want to show you this really cool stuff. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. So I hope you're ready. I am full of energy so let's code. I was going to say let's have some fun but maybe you don't like coding, I don't know. I sure as hell do. <laughs> pardon my French. Let's get started. Now pardon me for recording this in Windows 10 and also in Visual Studio 2014 CTP. I'm doing this because I've been dying to try it out and I'm trying to use it as much as possible to provide some feedback if I find things breaking. I found a couple of things. Remember this is a very very early preview so if you were to use Windows 10 and find some issues with it around this time be aware this is an early preview and it's not perfect and it is released so we as developers and other users can provide some feedback. So that means if I provide the code to you, which of course I will, you might not be able to open the project in your Visual Studio. But the code, there's so little. I really, really encourage you to try to code this yourself. That's the best way to learn. So download the code, have a look at it, and that's fine. But also make sure that you actually try this out.
The first thing that we need is actually the third party library. I do not know much about video, video encoding. I know a lot about editing, but this stuff is just way over my head. Luckily for us, AForge has a library that we can use. So if you go to the AForge download site, you want to make sure that you grab the libraries only. We're not going to use the executable. So you download libraries only and you take the, um, the latest version. And this is actually a, a uh, .NET 3.5 library, but that's fine. We're still going to make an application that is the latest .NET version. So don't worry about that. Once you've done that, again, right click and extract all the files. I'm not going to do that because I've already done that. Now, there are going to be two folders here we need to pay attention to. One is called externals and one is called release. We, oh, there goes the train. There goes the train. I might actually not edit that, kind, kind of adding atmosphere here. So there are two folders here. Um, we need bits and pieces from both of them. Under the release folder, let me just open it, we need two libraries in particular. There's a lot of things in here and I'm sure we can use a lot of this stuff here and create really cool things. But however, we don't need all of them, so I'm just going to select the one that we need and let's see if I can actually find it here. Yes, there we go. So we need these two libraries. We need the video DLL and also the one below it. And just remember that we're going to add a reference to the one below, but we don't need to add a reference to the AForge, just the video DLL. Actually, the trains seem to run a bit more frequent than every half an hour, so you just have to deal with it. So those two we need, and also in the externals, we need uh, under the FFmpeg, and in the bin folder, we are going to need all of these ones. These ones are dependencies for the other two libraries that we're using. So if you forget to add these ones, it's not going to work. And you're going to get uh, an exception, something that it's unable to load the DLL. And it's kind of hard to figure out what went wrong. So remember, you need the two video DLLs. And you also need all the DLLs in the externals FFmpeg bin folder. Now, you want to add those to your project and make sure that they are copied to the output directory. Or you can just copy them over and put them in the output directory. I would recommend, of course, that you pull them in your project and then set the output to copy always. I've already created up the application uh, we're going to create. It's simply a console application. But we're going to keep it really simple. The one I'm working on is just an executable. You drag over a file and it, uh, if you provide it a file with a number in the name, it's going to assume there's a sequence and it's going to go through all the files in that folder and then create a video from those files assuming they're a supported format and image format. We're going to keep it a little bit more simple than that. The first thing you need to do after you've created your console application is to go ahead and right click on your solution, clicking a little bit slowly here, then you select the configuration manager. Now, any CPU is not supported if you're going to add this particular third party library. So I've just set it to 32 bits here and I'm yeah, happy with that. That's going to pretty much run everywhere, so that's not a big problem. Once you've done that, the next thing that we need to do is obviously add a reference, as I said earlier. And as you can see, I've only added the reference to the video.ffmpeg DLL. Once you've done that, there's another little thing that you need to do. Now, obviously, you don't want to force a user to download .NET 3.5 if they don't have it. And Microsoft is really good at providing a compat compatibility backwards. However, for your application to be able to be to be able to use this DLL, you need to add a neat little attribute in your app config file. If your project doesn't have an app config file, you can add that to your project yourself. I've set the, I've let the supported runtime version to be the one for the application, which is a .NET Framework 4.5. Um, you only need to provide uh, the major numbers. You don't need to provide the full version number from uh, .NET versions 4 and up, I believe. Just good to know. This is the attribute you need to add. Use legacy v2 runtime activation policy equals true. If you do not add that, it's not going to work. So make sure that you add that.
I have to say, in regards to um, assembly, uh, assembly.net versioning, I, this is not a strong skill of mine, so if I'm saying anything that's incorrect, I'm kind of relying on you to tell me, and I'll try to edit the video and upload it again, so I don't, you know, tell people to do stupid things. Anyways, let's go back to our program. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to provide the path for the images and I'm going to show you the images here. As you can see they all look very similar and that's because it's a time lapse. And I used PowerShell to give them the appropriate numbers. I'll write a separate blog post on how to do that. For now I'm just going to assume that you're going to have images that are numbered from zero and up because I kind of hard coded stuff. So the first thing I've added here is just a constant with the base path and this is also where I'm going to output the video. And I do happen to know that I have exactly 60 images, so I'm going to set the images count to 60. We're still not using the library and this is where we start using the library itself. So let me just uncomment here once and you can see what we are doing. And I thought it was going to take all the lines but didn't do that so let's like so and there we go right to be able to use the third party library you need to add uh, using statement for the DLL itself and which is simple the same the same name as the DLL itself so make sure that you add that if you have ReSharper it will actually add it for you which is quite neat I do however I'm not using ReSharper anymore for my tutorials so I try to avoid it because sometimes people don't have a license and they're a bit confused when things happen automatically when using a video file writer you need to open open the writer itself and you start appending images to it after you define the video file that you want to create and then you need to close it and also dispose of it. If I was to go to the video file writer, come on go there, oh well control click doesn't really work here so I'm just going to try to F12 it, there we go. As you can see here it as you can see here it has a dispose method which means that we probably need to dispose it and I did some profiling trying out what happens if we were to not if we were to not dispose and the application ended up taking up 1.5 gigabytes of memory and at some point you got a memory uh, out of memory exception so please please when I say make sure you dispose of objects I am being dead serious please please do that so what the using statement does for us is just make sure that we're properly disposing of the object when it's finished with the code inside of it. And it's a really nice, neat way to make sure you're disposing of objects. So we have our video file writer and there is also a reader if you want to read specific frames or whatever you want to do with the file. However, I'm focusing only on the writer in this tutorial. Once we've done that, we need to go ahead and open it. And I'm going to show you how that is done. So I am opening the video writer and I'm also providing for it. Now this is too tiny for you to see, but I'm providing for it the details of the video file. I'm providing the path where I want the output to be and I'm also providing the width and the height and the frame count and also the type of video encoding as well as the, the bit rate. Now, just this is the numbers I've decided to go with. If you were to use smaller images, this is going to go a little bit faster. You're going to see that this application runs quite slowly and the bottleneck is actually writing to the writing the frames themselves. So there's not too much optimization that you can do. As far as I know, if there is, please tell me because this is so slow with just 60 images. Now, I've set the size to be the exact size as as the Im images and they have to be the same size that's quite important to know so if you have different size images you need to when you convert them to a bitmap you need to make sure that you change the size so it fits so we have our video writer we opened it and we know we're going to close it at some point so the next thing we need to do is to loop through all the images usually you would just go through the folder and see how many images you have if you want to do the application I was talking about earlier but this time since I know I have 60 images I've just hard-coded it because it's just a little bit easier and also I'm doing everything in the entry point of the application in the static void main um, of course 
if you want to use this in production, you probably don't want to do it exactly like this. And because this takes time to run, after all, we're going through quite a few images and we're doing a few things with them. It if it provides some graphical user interface, you want to make sure that you're not blocking the main UI thread. You want to make sure that you don't, the golden rule, do not touch the UI thread because there's only one and you don't want to keep the user waiting because they're going to think the application crashed. So usually you want to provide some sort of feedback. You can, um, you can time and kind of calculate how long it's going to take and you can provide some sort of countdown so they know. Usually when we can see how long we have to wait, we're more okay with waiting. So the next thing we need to do once we have our loop is to go ahead and just simply grab each and one of the images and of course I have a loop because that's how I figure out how to go through the sequence of images provided. So I'm therefore based on where in the loop we are, we're going to grab an image assuming that the naming is exactly like that. And I'm sorry if the train keeps kind of going over my voice but I've decided not to edit that out because it's going to be way too much work. So, we haven't done really so much yet, so let's have a look at the next step. So the next step is to go ahead and grab the image, because we only have a path, but we want to grab it as an actual image, or to be more precise, we want to grab a bitmap. And you might think that it says bitmap here, it's a bit hard to read, bitmap from file and then casting it as a bitmap is a little bit redundant, but apparently we have to do that to make sure we get a bitmap and not an image because the video writer doesn't accept an image, it accepts only a bitmap. To be able to call the bitmap from file, you need to add this namespace called system.drawing. And the way you do that is by right-clicking on the project, selecting Add Reference. I'm sure you know how to do this, but in case there are a few people who haven't done this before, I just want to make sure I cover everything. And then search for drawing, and not drawing, as I wrote there drawing under assemblies and just add a reference here to system.drawing, click OK, it's added, it's fine, add using state, um, the using statement and you're fine. So what we're doing now is we're going through the loop and we're getting an image and we're using the loop to create the, the path name, uh, the path for each of the images, we're grabbing them as a bitmap and the next thing we need to do is make sure that we actually append them and the way we do that is by using the right video frame method on the video writer. And then basically, actually this shouldn't be called image. I've called it image because uh, we're provided images, but to be more precise, I should call it bitmap or something like that. But anyways, it works. I'm going to go ahead and run the application and we're gonna take a lo another look at the result and see how that ended up. And this is all you need to write, it's quite neat. Make sure when you use it, you add your safeguards and etc. etc. You know this stuff, I mean, come on, you're a programmer. So yeah, let's run the application and let's have a look at the end result. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and for keeping up with my rambling if you managed to do that. I know I tend to talk really fast. If that bothers you, let me know. And me switching between American English, British English and sometimes a little bit of Australian. I kind of live all over the place and that's why I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> but I am tired. I need to go to bed because I got a spa to enjoy it tomorrow. My legs really deserve it from all the walking in this platform shoes seriously I've got platform shoes this big I'm a giant in this country and I'm enjoying it it's awesome so I'm gonna find some more cool stuff to do tutorials on and uh, I'll post one maybe later this week thank you again for watching happy coding don't forget to provide some feedback comments whatever I got shitloads left to learn as you can probably tell and uh, but that's why we're here for we're supposed to be sharing caring we're in this together Right, buddy? Right, yes. So, yep, yeah, keep communicating and take care and have a freaking fantastic day.